Thank you for taking the time to listen to Ask Win. If you would like to stop this podcast at any time, you are welcome to it. But I would request that you come back to this podcast and look for my books on Amazon. Type in I Win Hope and Life on Amazon or your favorite ebook provider or on Audible. Welcome to Ask Win, everyone. And today I really get the honor of picking someone's brain who I guess made me a better podcaster. He might share some stories about me, which is perfectly fine with me. This Matt and take it away. Oh, hey, Wynn. Um, it's good to talk to you. But yeah, I was lucky enough to uh, have you in my class this semester. Uh, I'm assuming you want me to talk a little bit about my, my, my career and, and how I, I got to yes. where I'm at right now? Yes, oh, exactly. Okay. Well, great. So um, I've been doing radio since I was 16 years old. I, I started in uh, my little hometown in West Virginia. Actually, as soon as I got my driver's license, I drove to the local radio station and, and, and told them I would do anything. I would clean the floors. I would do anything. So I just I always loved radio and wanted to do it. Um, and I started off just doing, you know, anything around the station, and eventually somebody got sick and called in, and I filled in for them on the air and uh, ended up doing that and did a pretty good job, I guess, because they let me keep doing it. And, um, you know, I went to college and put myself through college as a DJ. Um, I got a degree in creative writing and um, kept kept plugging away, though. I started in really small markets doing, you know, everything from country music to rock and roll. Uh, and so I finally got a, a break to uh, uh, go to Washington, D.C. and take over uh, a big talk show there. Um, that led me to New York City, and I had a uh, ran a morning show there and was on the air. And uh, that brought me to San Francisco because um, in radio we move around. Um, and uh, about nine years ago, I, I had the number one morning show in San Francisco, and I decided I was done with radio, and I wanted to try something different. And there was a new app called Stitcher, which is a podcast app, and uh, it was only three people working there, and uh, it, they just started, and they wanted me to come on and and uh, bring what I knew from radio to the app, and I did, and uh, that worked out really well. Stitcher is now uh, the number two most listened to podcast app outside of Apple. And uh, the last nine years, I've been spending a lot of time just as a consultant and a teacher. I started the podcast program at the Academy of Art University, which is the first podcast program in the United States. And currently, I am the vice president of podcast pro- programming for iHeartRadio. So we have uh, 90 million people that listen to our app and 845 radio stations, and I'm responsible for working with talent and coaching them and teaching them how to podcast. And I am... One of the podcasts, also I'm on Stitcher, you guys. I um, use Stitcher on a daily basis, even though I have the iPhone. I feel like the Apple podcasting app um, is a little bit clunky. So I use Stitcher. Stitcher did not pay me to say that, and Stitcher did not pay Maddie to say that he works with Stitcher, and Stitcher is the best podcasting app out there, you guys. For those of you who are diehard Apple fans, I think we need to boycott Apple. I boycott Apple Podcasts and move over to Stitcher just because Apple, even though I love Apple, I don't like their podcasting app, and that's all I'll say about that. Well, I, I would encourage everyone to move from Stitcher to uh, try iHeartRadio, too. iHeartRadio, um, we're a great oh, podcasting app. Yes. So that's yes. that's where I want you to be listening is on the iHeartRadio app. <laughs> I know you would. And thank you for saying Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Well, we're new. We've only been doing podcasting for a really, really doing podcasting for the past year and a half. So. Um, we're an up and coming, you know, um, for an app that's so big, it's, it's amazing. It took radio and so long to get into podcasting. You know, radio folks uh, were kind of reticent to get into podcasting for many years and, uh, and that's really changed. Exactly. And now I got, um, the iHeart radio, um, connection to my podcasting host, Nixon, which I, when I started this, 
people were telling me about Lipson, how great Lipson is, and I didn't believe them until I tried it out myself, fell in love, and that's what led me to do this. And then I was lucky enough to be trained by you. And so, okay, if you don't listen to Maddie's podcast called The Access Podcast, you won't understand why I'm asking this next question to Maddie. So go subscribe to um, Maddie's podcast if you want to understand why I'm asking this question. But Maddie, if you were a sandwich, what would that be? <laughs> oh, I love you, Wynn. Thank you for listening to my show. Um, that's my favorite question to ask uh, folks. Um, I would be a grilled cheese sandwich because um, I'm I'm warm and gooey and uh, everybody loves me. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, yes, you are. And then you tell it like it is. So a grilled cheese sandwich. So yeah. if you want to figure out why I'm asking that question, people go go listen to Access Podcast. You'll um, pretty much figure out why I just asked. Maddie, that question. And Maddie, I know you're a podcast consumer just like I am and host your own podcast, but I'm going to ask you what is your favorite podcast that you listen to and what is your favorite podcast that you have done on the Access Podcast? Wow, uh, my favorite podcast to listen to. That that changes from time to time. I mean, I've had my favorites. I think F Town was my favorite podcast um, that's been out ever. Um, I really enjoy Reply All. It, it is it's a Gimlet podcast, and Gimlet in general does really good podcasts. But Reply All is the one podcast that when it's new, I get excited about, and I can't wait to get and go listen to it. Um, and as far as my show. Gosh, I've had some really fun guests, but um, I, I would say that um, the radio host Bobby Bones was one of my favorites. Um, he uh, is one of the first guys in radio to really embrace podcasting, and uh, you know he's he is listened to all over the country, and um, I really liked him and, and having him on, and um, you know he he was great. Uh, I, I love uh, Paul Mercurio; he's a comedian and a friend of mine, so I always have a good time talking to him as well, but. Um, and, and I'll say this, Dallas Taylor, who's the host of 20,000 uh, Hertz, um, which is a, an audio po- – it's a podcast about audio design. So cool. It's such a good podcast, and he, he was I really act- fun. I actually listened to the um, – I haven't listened to his podcast yet, but I did listen to your interview with him, and you um, – Hold a sound clip at the beginning, and I'm not telling my fans what that sound clip was. I have to go listen to Dallas's interview with Maddie to figure out what that sound clip was. But for you to pull that sound clip right at the beginning was absolutely amazing. Great, thanks. Yeah, it's a uh, it's good. I have a really good producer too who uh, works with me, Z. So she's uh. I know She's you the do. one that puts my shows I know together. You do. She's, uh, yeah, I know you do. And how did, okay, now I'm going to ask a technical question. Yeah. How do we all find good producers? How, because I know there's great podcast and it is, I have a great podcast editor, but I don't do the podcast editing my so even though I should, even though I should, one of yes, the when even though things, you should, and you had a whole class on it. I know, I know. One of the Maddie's big things with me was the uh, emphasis on the podcast was there. You just don't like to edit. I'm like, okay, so now that is completely right out of bed. I don't like to edit and you know so I need I need to teach myself how to edit if I want to do a production of a podcast that's one of my down thoughts you guys and that is just let it out of bed on you. <laughs> we talked about this 
It's public. It's public. Uh, Maddie, those are my final comments. You need to edit. So eventually I'll edit and get my podcast to the point of hopefully NPR, but I won't advocate for that point. I don't think we all will. But to answer my question, what does it take to be an excellent podcast producer? Well, I tell you, um, you know, I'm lucky. Um, so my producer, in fact, most of my staff at iHeartRadio um, are folks that I taught at the Academy of Art University. So I, I've been able to train them. Um, and, you know, I came from doing morning radio and talk radio. So I, I have, you know, a big producer background. And, and I'll say one of the things that's wrong right now is we don't train enough good producers. I mean, a good producer should, you know, have really good instincts for what's good on the air should be able to argue with the host and, and uh, push for things that um, will sound good and, and not be bullied over by the host. Um, there is a need for podcast editors right now. I mean, there's a lot of people who will edit your podcast, but there's a big difference between an editor and a producer. An editor can cut out the ums and ahs and make things sound right, but a producer actually works on the content uh, with the guests and, and like, you know, has a good understanding for how the show should sound and can oversee the sound design as well. Because, you know, as we as we look at the podcasts that we do for iHeart, you know, these bigger kinds of podcasts, you know, we need to make sure that uh, that there's somebody that's editing and then also somebody that's doing the sound design for the overall feel of the podcast. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, it takes it takes all that, but it takes a good understanding of sound. And and at the end of the day, it just takes practice. So if you're not you're not doing it all the time, you're not going to get good at it. Yeah, and that um, that's one of my downfalls. I don't practice enough. I admit I don't. I like the aspect of podcasting, but I admit the editing is one of my downfalls. And It's something I'm going to have to work on, and I will work on it, and I will um, eventually work on it. And, yeah, that's one of my, now that I'm taught in actually producing a podcast by Miss Manic, I um, feel like I should work on it even more than I did. And so that's one of my classes processes and that's something that I can only do a um a podcast editor can't help me with that. I'm sorry to my podcast editor for admitting that she can't help me with that even though she wants to scoop in and help me. She's wonderful. And so Maddie, what is your favorite book? It doesn't have to be a business book. It just has to be a book that you go time and time back to time and time again, and then um, it can be audio books, too. Oh, let's see. Um, I I read a lot. Um, I, I read probably a book every two weeks, so I, I'm, I'm constantly reading. But there are two books that I always go back to. Uh, the first one is John Steinbeck's The Winner of Our Discontent. Um, it's kind of a downer book, um, but I really enjoy it. And then the other book is called A Fool's Progress uh, by Edward Abbey. And uh i i absolutely love that book it, it's it it really is um it, it's one it's you know the books like that you can just pick up and, and go back and read you know a couple times or books i really enjoy but you know i like lots of different kinds of books and writers i like historical fiction so i read a lot of you know bernard cornwell and um i love the game of thrones books i believe it or not as big as they are i've read all of them four times each so uh, I, I guess that might make. I guess that would be my favorite book to devote that much time to like one yeah. book series. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. And um, if you had to be educated by someone inside or outside your field, who would it be and why? Uh, well, I have a great mentor. Um, his name's Jeremy Coleman. He's uh, the president of the Howard Stern Network now, and he he's been my mentor for since I left West Virginia and started working in, in like radio in DC and New York, and and um, 
and I, I think it's very important to have mentors. Um, I, in fact, and I pick up, you know, different mentors, you know, all the time, you know, whenever I, you know, if there's something I don't know a lot about, um, which is most things, <laughs> I try to find people who are really good at that thing and then, and, and try to, you know, to, to talk to them and, and use them as a mentor. Um, if I could talk to anybody at length, uh, yeah, I am a huge Howard Stern fan. Um, I started my radio career. Uh, a lot because of him and my whole career has been kind of from his school of radio. So um, Howard would definitely be one. If I got a chance to interview Howard, that would, I'd probably do a terrible job at it. I, I, um, I was a huge Anthony Bourdain fan and his, his death really um, was shocking for me. Um, I got to interview him a few years ago and I was a complete dope the whole interview because I was such a fan and, and I've met and interviewed many, many people over the years. I mean, everybody from Tom Cruise to Matt Damon to, I mean, I mean, just everybody. And there are just certain people who, if you're a, you know, truly a fan of, you will geek out about. And Anthony was one of them. And I completely geeked, geeked out the entire interview with him. Yeah. And it's in Look So Hot now. And I read, I read that on your Twitter that, you said, oopsies, I'm sorry that I geeked out because um, now this guy committed suicide and we uh, are not promoting suicide on this podcast, but we might have linked that up because Anthony Bourdain wasn't that old to be doing that. Yeah, yeah, it was really sad. Yeah, it's just really sad. So, Maddie, before I let you go, do you have any questions for me? What is the biggest misconception that people have about folks with uh, with cerebral palsy? I I have to tell you guys this. I met with a psychologist yesterday, not because I am in trouble mentally, it's for my trust fund, and everything is perfectly fine, but um, she treated me as if I was dumb, 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 and I'm sorry, but she was so straight and ill and rude beyond belief that, um, like, get me out of there. But a lot of people think that people with um, physical disabilities and mental disabilities are not as smart as we are. And um, we are smart. It just takes us a little bit of time to catch on. And do you feel that... um when you're doing your podcast, that that is a this is a, this is your way to dispel a lot of myths because you know when people listen and, and hear you know and hear you talk and talk to your guests that you know I feel like you're doing a really good thing for the world and I think podcasting does a good thing for the world and I hope you feel like you're doing that too. Well, thank you for saying that. And no, I did not pay Andy to say that, but um, I feel like I am. The, I am breaking the fence just a little bit, and I want to uh, keep doing this as long as I can. I mean, that's why I'm getting the degree in journalism. And even though you're teaching a communications class, they and I'm not in the communications section, they let me switch out by um, one of my fashion drawing programs you and they I don't know how they found this out but um, they said we want you to take a podcast in class and I'm like you guys what want me to take a podcast in class and I'm like how did you know that I needed to be trained in this and I still haven't to this day figured that one out but maybe they listening to my podcast. I don't know. But um, I feel like I am doing the world a service. I feel like I am doing 
it to the best of my abilities, and I feel like I am the only woman podcaster out there with cerebral palsy doing it, and I feel like I'm taking the fear out of podcasting as well. Well, good. Jo- you're doing a great job, Win. Well, thank you. Thank you. And where can the people find you? I know you're active on the two Twitter accounts. And where um, where can people get a hold of you if they want more information? Well, I'm easy. It's at Maddie, M-A-T-T-Y, S-T-A-U-D-T, at Maddie Stout. And that's for everything. Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of it. Easy to find. All of it. Easy to find. And, of course, um, the communication class that Maddie teaches, if you guys have the chance to be taught by Maddie like I did, you just fall in love with it. You'll, he tells it like it is. No more this nice guy. And I want to say congratulations to you, Maddie, because as we were all working on our um, – communications and podcasting skills, you were actually doing something for yourself. You just earned a master's degree in communications? I did, yeah, finally. Uh, Am I correct? Yeah. You did, yeah. So congratulations on that. Thank you, Wynn. I I think it's it's important to always keep learning. I know it's not easy. But I know that as we will, when you told us all that, I'm like, yes, we're secretly doing this while teaching classes. The teachers have many talented guys. And so I appreciate Mandy coming on and talking a little bit about his podcasting journey. And if you guys want to... um know more about his classes, just go to the Academy of Arts website, request information, or just Google the Academy of Arts and request information. And yes, accessibility is right on the bottom of the website. And yes, their teachers are wonderful. I had nothing but great teachers, including Maddie. And so I highly encourage you guys to check out the Academy of Arts. And as Maddie said, this is the first podcasting um, track ever in the country at uh, campus. So you teach this class in person or strictly online, Maddie? I teach both, online and in person. Okay. So So you do teach both. I I took the online version, which is absolutely phenomenal, and maybe one of these days I have to take the in-person um, version, or at least get a tour of iHeartRadio when I'm out there. I will definitely do that for you guys, so you can see the inner workings of iHeartRadio with me, because, you know, I love podcasting, and I definitely love the education that Mandy has taught me, even though my downfall is editing, but I'll work on that, and um, we'll just keep this podcast going the best we can. And thanks to you guys for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed another fabulous episode. Thanks to you guys. Bye. Please leave a review on Amazon for my books, and please share this episode with a friend who needs it.